Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this video we're going to take a look at some simple reduction operations in the context of Java streams. It's actually going to take several videos to cover the idea of reduction because it does get a little bit complicated. But we're going to get started with the basics of it in this video. And the idea of reduction is that we reduce all the items in the stream, all the elements, to just one element, which could be a number, it could be a string, it could be a collection containing all the elements, or basically anything else. But the point is we're reducing the stream to just one item. Let's see it create an array of doubles. So I'll call it doubles and we'll set this equal to some array 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, that ought to do. And then we can create a stream of this with double stream dot of and pass the array to it. And a simple example of a reduction operation is the count method, which returns a long and just counts the elements in the stream. Let's add the import for double stream and get the result that's returned here. So result one, I'll call it equals that. And then we can just output result one. And this does exactly what you'd expect. So it's telling us we've got three items in the stream. Let's try another really simple example of a reduction operation here. So again, we're going to add a terminal operation to the pipeline of operations, which is going to return a value. And we're just going to sum the items. So this is going to give us a double value, which is just the sum of the items, 6.0. Now there are at least three other really useful terminal reduction operations here that we can use. Let's copy this and have a go at average. Now this works just a little bit differently. Let's take a look at what happens if I run this. So if I run it, we get optional double. Why? Well, you have to think what happens if the stream is empty? What if there are no elements in it? What's average supposed to do? So what it does is return a optional double value, which can then essentially be empty. And if you want to get the value from it, if it does have a value, we can do get as double, and then we see the actual value, which is a double value, two. So that's just the sum of the items divided by the number of items. Min and max work the same way. Again, you have to bear in mind that there's not going to be a minimum or a maximum if there are no elements in the stream. Therefore, we're going to return a optional double rather than just a plain double. So let's have here result four, and here we'll have min. And if we run that, we're going to get one. And finally, max. Let's try that. And here we get three. Now we can create our own reducers. So for example, what does sum actually do? Well, it combines the elements two at a time using the plus operator. So it's going to do one plus two, and then it's going to take that and then do that plus three. So one plus two, three plus three. But suppose we want to multiply them all together. We can kind of roll our own here. So let's copy this and paste this down here and we'll have result six. And instead of calling max, I'm going to call reduce. And you can see there are two different versions of this. And we're going to look at the simplest version first. So what we need here is a Lambda expression that takes elements two at a time and combines them somehow. So let's do a comma b. This is just a Lambda expression and we want to return A times B. Does that work? Let's try it. So we get six and one times two is two, two times three is six. So we've got the right result. Notice we have to do get as double. This returns a, again an optional double value because what are you going to do if there's nothing in the stream? Then we can't return anything. So we need that optional value because that has a method that can tell us whether it's empty or not. And then only if it actually has a value set in it, do we call get as double. Now there is a way around this little problem if you call it a problem. Let's copy this and try something very slightly different. We're going to try the other form of reduce. So let's change this to seven, result seven, and we can supply an initial argument to this. So think about what this is actually doing. It's important to understand that it's not being passed the elements in the stream two at a time, strictly speaking. This is going to get past the first element and the second element when it first runs. But then when it runs again, it's going to get past the running total or whatever we've calculated so far for A, and then the next element with B, and so on. 
So it's going to get past 1 and 2, and that's going to multiply those together to get 2. And then it will get past 2 and 3. So coincidentally, it is getting past 2 and 3 again. But the second time it runs, it's really receiving a kind of running total of whatever operation this is applied to the previous elements. To take another example, if we think about how sum works, if we implemented sum, first we'd get past 1 and 2, we'd add those together to get 3, and then we'd get past 3 and 3, taking the running total and adding on the next element. So this is what this is doing, it's combining a kind of running total, if you can call it a total, with the next element every time. And the first time this runs, it is going to have to be past the first two elements. But what if there aren't any elements at all in the stream? Then there's kind of a problem there. So this version, the one that we're about to use now, allows us to supply the initial element, which in this case should be 1. And then we're always going to have a value returned, even if there are no elements in the stream. So we don't get returned an optional double, we get returned, in this case, a double. So if we run this, we'll get the same result again, which is 6. So now, what's this actually going to receive? It's going to get past, first time, 1 and 1. It multiplies those together to make 1. Then it gets past 1, which we've just calculated, and 2. Multiplying those together gives us 2. Then it gets past 2, the value we've already calculated, and 3. And it multiplies those to get 6. And that works, even if there are no elements in the stream, because then this just won't get called at all. Only this will be returned. Now there's an important concept here which is worth knowing about. What should this item actually be? Well, it's often called an identity element. It's the element which, in this case, if you multiply something by it, it doesn't change that thing. So under the operation of multiplication, the identity element is 1. Anything multiplied by 1 is just the same thing it was already to start with. If we have plus here instead, what's the identity element for plus? What's the element which, when you combine a number with it using plus, doesn't change it? And the answer to that is 0. So if we had a plus here, we would want 0 here. And this is kind of common sense if you think about it a bit. You want to start off with something that's not going to alter the result that you finally calculate. For multiplication, that's 1, and for addition, that will be 0, the identity element in both cases. Now, we're not limited to doing numerical stuff here. Let's take another example. Let's create a stream of strings. So I'm going to have a var result 8 equals stream.of. I could use that to create a stream of strings, and we'll have hello to you. And let's imagine that I want to concatenate these together. How would I do this with reduce? Let's write reduce. And if you want an exercise, you could pause the video and go ahead and try this because I'm sure you could actually figure this out. So let's start with the identity element. What's the identity element for string concatenation? What's the element which, if you concatenate it with another string, makes no difference? Well, that's an empty string. Then we can have a lambda expression, which is going to accept our running total plus the next element in the stream. And we'll just do a plus b, which is now, strictly speaking, not addition. It's the concatenation operator for strings. And then let's do sysout and result 8. And if we run this, we get hello to you, all concatenated together. Now let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated. What if we want to add all the items in a list to a collection using reduce. Can we do it? In fact, we can do it. We're going to see later on in this course a better way to do this, but it's a good exercise to see if you can do it using reduce, I think. Let's start with a stream of something really simple, like, for example, just some integers. And we'll put in for each initially so that we can just take a look at them and see how they look. So if I run that, we should get 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, how would we go about reducing these to, let's say, an array list? And again, if you want an exercise, you could pause the video and have a go at it yourself. Here's what I came up with. So the trick is to first map each item in the stream to a list. So let's start by doing that. Let's put in map there. And we can easily map each item to its own list, if you think about it by using list.off. We'll add the import for list there. And if I run that, so now we've got each item in its own immutable list. 
And what we can do now is with reduce, we can create a mutable list, one that we can actually change and combine all of these lists one by one into a single list. Let's try it. So I'm going to replace for each with reduce. So what do we want to start off with? What's the identity element? And we could call this element now an accumulator because this element is effectively going to accumulate all the other elements. If you think of it as an identity element, then you want a list which, when combined with other lists, doesn't change them. So that would basically just be an empty list. What we need here is something like new array list integer. And that's going to be our first element that we start off with. I'll add the input there for array list. And what do we want next? Well, we're going to have a Lambda expression again. And this is going to receive lists now. It's going to receive the list that consists of all the elements that we previously added to the list, followed by the next element in the stream, which is itself now a list, which we need to combine with the kind of running total. And I couldn't think of a way to do that with one single method call without writing a whole method somewhere. But we can fit that into a Lambda expression. Let's have an arrow. And here we can say a.addAll and add all the items to list A from list B. And then we can just do return A. And now we should get what we want. Let's say for our result 9 equals. And we'll print this out so we can take a look at it. And if we run it, we get what we want. We get all of our elements added to a list. There is a better way to do this, which we'll look at later on. But I think it's a really good exercise just to try this out for yourself. Just make sure you can do this because you should be able to figure it out even without referring back to this video after a little bit of practice. I think it's a kind of a good test that you understand what Reduce is doing here. And essentially, we're just starting with this element and then we're combining it with all of these elements, one after the other. And by the way, if you register free to my website, caveofprogramming.com, you get immediate access to a bunch of free courses, and there are also premium courses on here that you can pay for if you should ever want them. In the next video, we're going to start taking a look at collectors, and it's going to take at least two videos to cover that because it is a little bit complicated. Collectors are a kind of mutable reduction operation, and we're going to have an in-depth look at those. So do join me again for that, and until next time, happy coding.